Over all the earth, you reign on high. Every mountain stream, every sunset sky. But my one request, Lord, my only aim, is that you reign in me again. Lord, reign in me, reign in your power. Over all my dreams, in my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again, over every thought, over every word. May my life reflect the beauty of my Lord, cause you mean more to me than any earthly thing. So won't you reign in me again, Lord, reign in me, reign in your power. Over all my dreams, in my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again, Lord, reign in me, reign in your power. Over all my dreams, in my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again? So won't you reign in me again? Lord, won't you reign in me again? Well, good morning, church. It's good to be with you again. Thanks for tuning in. It's a beautiful day here in southwest Oklahoma. God has blessed us with a wonderful week, some good rains and beautiful sunshine. And the birds uh, this morning were just praising God. And I, I pray that that's what you have come to do today is just praise God together. Listen, I'm going to talk to you today about three simple things in just a few moments. Uh, three simple things that you can take with you in your life, hopefully make your life just a little bit better and draw you a little bit closer to who God is and what God wants for your life. We're going to do that in just a few moments. Between now and then, however, we're going to have some songs, of course. We'll do communion together. And in the video today or in the um, service today, you're going to see a little video of just a, a little clip of who our seniors are here at Western Hills and um, those that are graduating this year. We're proud of every single one of them and, and we pray that only good things come their way. And maybe you have a senior or you know someone out there that's about to graduate. Make sure you congratulate them on that, um, that, that journey that they're on and uh, wish them well and pray for them and let them know that we're praying for them, for we truly love them. They are our future. We need to make sure that we encourage them to stay in the Lord as well. So God bless you, and I'll talk to you in just a few moments. Bye now.
This is Caleb Amor. He is graduating from Elgin High School and plans to study engineering in college. This is Phoebe Briggs. She will be graduating from Cash High School and will be attending the Apollo Career Center to become a medical assistant. This is Callie Dennis. She will be graduating from MacArthur High School and plans to attend Oklahoma State University to major in business finance. This is Abby Dittmeyer. She will be graduating from Elgin High School and plans to attend Oklahoma Christian University to major in psychology. This is Stephen Ross. He will be graduating from Eisenhower High School and plans to attend Illinois State University to study biology. This is Gavin Smalley. He will be graduating from Elgin High School and plans to attend Cameron University to study engineering. Dear Father in Heaven, thank you for blessing us with the lives of our graduating seniors. Watch over them as they move into the next phase of their lives. This is a big moment in time for them, so help them to realize that they will make their own decisions even more now. Decisions that will steer what they will do in life. May they be influenced by what they have learned from your Holy Word, and help them to apply those principles to decisions down the road. We ask for special blessings for Caleb A. Moore, Phoebe Briggs, Callie Dennis, Abigail Dittmeyer, Stephen Ross, and Gavin Smalley. Bless these families as they encourage them to their next phase of life. May these seniors who hope in you renew their strength. May they soar on wings like eagles. May they run and not grow weary. And may they walk and not get tired. Bless them all through Jesus Christ. Amen. In heavenly armor will enter the land. The battle belongs to the Lord. No weapon that's fashioned against us will stand. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory.
catch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss. The So last week, Harley reminded us to rejoice in the Lord always, even when things aren't going our way. And let's be honest, it's easy to complain about things that irritate us. I teach a lot of kids, uh, the high, school, high schoolers today, and one of the things that we prayed about were end of year state tests and uh, the end of the year tests for their, for their classes. So I mean, it, that's, a, that's something that they stress about. People that are a little bit older, they may stress about working a dead-end job with no hope for advancement in sight. Or you may be somebody that's living with tension in a failing relationship, just waiting for the moment for the one of you to decide that it's over and they finally want to end it all. But these hardships, they can turn into blessings in an instant. Your Heavenly Father doesn't want to see you suffer. Rather, He desires to see you prosper and to be filled with His love and spirit. Sometimes we need a paradigm shift. And I think that's what Harley's message was preaching last week. At least that's how my soul felt about it. We need to look at our situations differently so that we can focus on how blessed we are rather instead of how bad things are all the time. Students going through state tests, you can see it as God's way of getting you ready for the many other tests that life has in store for you. Those of you working at a job that you hate, Count your blessings that you are employed. 
Many would love to have the opportunity that you have. And maybe this job right now is just a stepping stone for God to use to shower you with many blessings later. And for the ones that are in in a rocky relationship, your father wants nothing more than to see you overcome heartache and sadness. He wants to see restoration. It won't be easy breaking down barriers that have built up, but God can overpower any man-made walls, real or emotional. So instead, we need to focus on our blessings. Okay? As it says in James 1.17, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does, who does not change like shifting shadows. I want you to remember those words. When things are going hard... Do what Harley said. Start counting the blessings that you have. Count them out loud. Try to get to 100. Before you know it, you don't even know what number you're on. So now let's take a moment to focus on the most important blessing that God has ever given us. Salvation through his son, Jesus. If you'll please join me as we pray for the bread. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the ultimate sacrifice that you gave us. This little wafer that we're about to eat represents the body, your son's body that was broken for all of our souls. Whether or not we deserve it, because we never will, we are seen as clean because of that sacrifice. So please let us remember that. Ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. Now, if you'll join me as we pray for the the juice. Heavenly Father, this little cup of juice represents the blood that was shed. That Jesus is allowed to happen. And with that blood shed, he was able to die for all of our sins. And as as we drink this juice, let us remember that. Let us just take a moment to realize that that is the biggest blessing that we will ever have in this life is the the certainty that we know that when we're done here that we get to go someplace that we can't describe someplace that we don't deserve but because you loved us so much you let your son die for us we thank you so much let us remember these things as we go throughout the week too we ask these things in your son's precious holy name amen There's a table in the foyer. On that table, there's many baskets where you may drop off a physical offering. We also uh, have a way that you can donate your offering using the Simple Church app. And we need to remember that you know all these great things that we do have in this church, they, they do come for a price. And if it wasn't for your amazing contributions, we wouldn't be able to have them all. So we thank you for that. But let's also pray for the offering for today. Please join me. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this amazing congregation that seems that they see, they see the importance of our, of our program and what we're able to do. Um, and if it wasn't for their generosity, we wouldn't be able to do these things. We pray that uh, you will take the offering that is made today and you'll bless it and allow it to be applied to the things that you need to see your kingdom grow. Thank you so much, Lord. Amen. Lord, the light of your love is shining In the midst of the darkness shining Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us Set us free by the truth you now bring us Shine on me Shine on me
Well, I'm glad you made it back, and I hope you enjoyed uh, the service so far. And um, I really enjoyed the uh, the little clip of our seniors, and we just again only wish them well and pray for each of them. In keeping light of that, I wrote down a couple of, of funnies. I guess um, this one sounds like it would come from my um, my grandson Douglas. Listen, to this one. He says, I was surprised when a friend of mine said that he was going to work at KFC after graduation. Out of curiosity, curiosity, I asked him, why are you going to work there? And he simply said, well, it's on my bucket list. <laughs> Muhammad Ali once said this, if they can make penicillin out of moldy bread, they can surely make something out of you. And Robert Orsben said it this way, a graduation ceremony, now catch this, a graduation ceremony is an event where the commencement speaker tells thousands and thousands of students dressed in identical caps and gowns that individuality is the key to success. <laughs> well, I'm going to give you some three simple things. If I was talking to each one of those seniors throughout the world actually today, I would really want to impress many things, of course, into their lives, but I want to give you these three simple things that if you were sitting across the table from one, this would be something that you could share with them. But I also want to say this is not for just graduating seniors, of course. It's for you. It's from seniors graduating to seniors in living centers or wherever they might be and wherever you might be in life as well. Three simple things that I think that are important for your life and mine as well. And I have to remember this because I can kind of get a little bit out of whack sometimes. I don't know about you. Here we go. Number one, first and foremost, I would simply say this. Don't believe everything you hear. Did you catch that one? Don't believe everything you hear. Satan is the great deceiver and he is the father of all lies. You need to know that. You need to know that. In this particular, the Pharisees challenged Jesus. In John chapter 8, they challenged Jesus. And he goes through this whole list of things. And then he says, and he tells them who Satan is. But he says, the devil is your father. You are from him. You want to do the sinful things that your father, the devil, wants you to do. He has been a killer from the beginning, the devil has nothing to, nothing to do with the truth. There is no truth in him. It is expected of the devil to lie, for he is the liar, or he is a lie, and the father of all lies. It's pretty clear that Jesus wants you and me to know that the devil is a liar. In uh, 2 Corinthians, it says, No wonder, for Satan himself masquerades, and here's the one that catches us. He masquerades around as an angel of light. There are a lot of things going on in our world today. And it looks like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But remember what Jesus said. He masquerades 
around as the angel of light. But he's a liar and he's a deceiver. You need to know that. The world will teach you lies. The world will teach you lies to get you and I to doubt what you have been taught as the truth, which is God's Word. It will teach you to hate what you once said you loved. Now keep in mind that a lie has to be taught as a truth for it to be believed. You can fall for something that's a lie because you think someone's telling you the truth. Be careful. Let me give you an example of that, the hot topic right now in our world today. Someone says, well, you get all this political stuff going. No, no, no. I'm talking about what's going on in our world, and we should not be surprised. Because the liar, Satan himself, is alive and well, and he wants to deceive you and me and continue to deceive the world. Now watch. Here's a hot topic. Hate. Example. Hate. Hate has always been among us because hate is a heart condition. If you go back from the very beginning in Genesis, uh, Cain killed Abel out of hatred. There was a heart condition that he had. Man has always had a heart condition, meaning that it's always been within man to do things that are not right. You cannot mandate one to not hate. It cannot be done. I don't care how many laws you pass. There is a difference in our, our society today, I think now more than ever, certainly it's pulled to the forefront. And this is that. That it is being taught in every single area, every arena in our society today is being taught to hate. To hate each other and to even hate yourself. Think about that. Let me use this uh, as an illustration. It, it is the rabbit that's being chased right now, probably more than anything else in our society. Hate. It's the rabbit that's being chased. Now, when that rabbit is run its race or runs back into the hole, don't worry. They'll find something else to grab a hold of and get you and I to believe it, even though it's false. Satan is the center of all these things. So don't believe everything you hear. How do I know that Satan is the center of all these things? Well, here it is. God says... If you remember in Matthew chapter 22, they come to Jesus and they ask him this question. What are the greatest commandments? And Jesus comes back and he simply says, he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. For all of the other commands hinge upon these two things. So what is the opposite of just what Jesus said there in Matthew chapter 22? The opposite is to push to divide, to divide what God gives the cure for. So he says, or Satan is trying to do, he pushes one thing to divide us, to keep us away from what God says that will, what will unite us in our lives. And catch this, because you believe something doesn't make it true. But what is true, you have the opportunity to believe. That's why we teach God's Word. That's why we're called to study God's Word. To show yourself approved. Rightly dividing the Word of truth. And so when you look at God's Word, it allows you opportunity to believe what is true. Not what someone might tell you outside of God's Word. There is a difference. Everything you hear is not truth. Hold it up to the light of God's word. For this is not only your spiritual compass, is this is your success in life compass. And I would just try to impress that on these young people that are going in out into the world as we call it. To let them know that this is the compass for a successful life. Not only spiritually, but in your everyday walk as well. The Holy Spirit allows us and always points us in the right direction, which is to God himself. 
While some people will rely on just feelings, and feelings are important, but feelings can get us to sway in one way or the other, and Satan knows that. So what he will do is he'll just plug in little things as he go along and teach you that, and you will think it's the truth, but it'll end up realizing in the end it's all false. It's make-believe, if you will. We cannot just look around at other people and make our decisions upon what they are doing. Every generation says this to the next generation. Everyone that I know of. Just because everyone else is doing it doesn't make it the right thing to do. You wouldn't jump off a cliff if your friends jumped off a cliff, would you? We say, listen, that is another lie of Satan getting you to fall in line with what other people tell you is the truth. But if it's not in God's word, it may not be the truth. You have to be careful. The Spirit of God helps us understand God's Word, which again always points us in the right direction. It points us to Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, John chapter 14, verse number 6. So the first thing I would say is don't always believe what you hear. Hold it up to what you know is the truth, which is God's Word. Secondly, don't forget to activate your faith. This is huge in our lives. This is huge for all of us. People forget to activate their faith. A stale faith never grows and is never rewarded. Did you catch that? A stale faith never grows and it's not rewarded. There was a young boy, here's one for you. There's a young boy that was riding home from um, church one day on the church bus and in his Sunday school class he was given this um, this uh, little picture and the caption underneath the picture simply said have faith in God have faith in God he just loved this but as they were going down the road his picture flew out the window and he cried out to the bus driver he said stop stop the bus I've lost my faith in God we are like that. We all should be more concerned about our faith in God. The things in the world are happening, and I understand that, but our faith has to be solid in what we say we believe, which is God. And on our journey together, we must continually remind ourselves that our faith, or continually to build upon our faith, so that our faith will stay strong. One way of doing that is to activate it often in your life. Can I ask you a question then? How often do you activate your faith? Acting your faith, activating your faith daily can bring great blessings to your life. Activate your faith. Activate your faith in your kindness and how you treat people. Look for ways to activate your faith in your love or your giving or whatever it might be in your life, at your workplace. Activate your faith of being able to, to stay the course so that you can grow in your faith with God. One of the greatest tools that we need to make sure that our young people understand, but I want you to know today as well, one of the greatest tools that we have in our arsenal of things that God gives us is a thing called faith. Use it. Activated faith is noticed by God. Did you know that? Activated faith is noticed by God. How do we know that? All through Scripture, when Jesus was here, all through the Gospels, you see where Jesus notices faith. No faith, little faith, great faith. God notices your faith. And He notices when you and I activate our faith in Him. It causes Him to look. Look at us. Let me give you an example. Matthew chapter 8. You know this one. It's a centurion officer. He comes to Jesus. He hears that Jesus is this healer. So he has faith 
and he comes to Jesus. And he tells him that he has this servant that works for him or underneath him. And he says, very ill. And Jesus, in this setting, says, no problem, I'll go with you and heal the person. And the officer tells Jesus, God himself, he tells him, no, master, you don't need to go with me. Lord, you don't need to go with me to heal him. You just say the word and he will be healed. Now, in that scripture there, as you see, in verse number 10 is the remarkable uh, statement that Jesus comes back with. Because what he tells the people there is this. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Did you catch that? Hang on to that word, amazed. And said to those following him, Truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel, all of Israel, with such great faith. God notices your faith. Find ways to amaze God. Did you know that you can amaze God? Apparently you can. This is what he said about the centurion. Then find ways to amaze God with your faith. Activate it. Get it going in your life. Faith activates blessings. Do you like blessings? Well, of course you do. Who doesn't? The young people that are graduating, do you want blessings in their life? Do they want blessings in their life? Sure they do. Well, then this is the key. Activate your faith blessings will follow. Just try it. It works. Because it's God's design and it's the truth from God's Word. Listen, salvation is a free gift from God. It tells us that in uh, Ephesians chapter 2. It's a free gift and it's ex if it, it can be accepted by anyone that chooses to. It's a free gift. And the reason why it's a free gift is because you won't walk around and say, well, I did this, so I get salvation. I gave that, so I get salvation. Or I'm this person, so I get salvation. God said, no, we're going to put that to a stop. That's that, that's that worldly way of thinking. That's what the world thinks. The world thinks, well, I can live any way I want to, do whatever I want to, and in the end, I can still get heaven. He says, no, no, no. You have to have faith in God. It's a free gift. Accept it. However, when I say that, you need to know this. Blessings are conditional. That's right. Blessings from God are conditional. Salvation is one thing, but blessings are conditional and they're based upon they're based upon our having faith in God. You see God is a faithful God. The question is, will you be faithful? Will I be faithful? God sees your faith. And when He sees your faith, He honors that. But we are the ones that must activate our faith. This is why it tells you in the book of James chapter 2 is, it goes on to say, in the same way faith by itself is not accomplished, if it's not accomplished by action, is dead. Faith without works is dead, one translation says. But it doesn't say works and faith, it says faith and works. Because in this process, watch, you have to have faith, but you have to put it in gear. It means that you launch out in that process. So I wrote it down like this. Faith in God is following. Faith in God is following the instructions, even if you don't know the details of the outcome. God, I don't know what the outcome is, but I know that if you're in it, I know it's going to be good for me because you love me. I have faith that you are going to bless me. I have faith that you're going to save me. I have faith that you're going to protect me. I have faith that you're going to heal me. I have faith. You see how it works? But you have to put it into action. You can't go around with your faith in your pocket. You got to get it out of your pocket and put it and make it active in your life for it to work. Don't forget to activate your faith in life. And finally, number three I would say today, the simple thing is, remember who you belong to. Do you know who you belong to, my friend? If you've given your life to Jesus Christ, you belong to God. You need to know where you come from. You come from God. 
This is important. Look at these two scriptures. This is just two. I could give you dozens of them. Look it up. Google it. Just Google it. You know, am I a child of God? How does that work? Does God live in me? And all those, Google it. Read it. Read, get in God's word. Study it. Know what he thinks about you. Here's one. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple? And that God's spirit dwells in your midst? Don't you know that this is the temple of God? God lives with inside of me. Lakato said that the DNA of God has been placed with inside of me. I like that. And there in 1 Peter it says, But you are not like that, for you are chosen people. You see, my friend, God chose you. He chose you before the foundations of the world. He chose you. That's how much He loves you. You are a royal priesthood. You see where He puts you on the scale of things? A holy nation. God's very own possession. That's pretty cool, isn't it? As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for He called you out of the darkness into this wonderful light. You remember that the worldly way? The worldly way is what? Is darkness. God's way is light. Get to the light. God's pulled you out of that. And we praise Him for it. Give me an amen. One of the stories I like to tell, you may have heard it before, and if you've listened to me over the years, you've probably heard me say it many times, but I'll share it with you real quick. If you're my age or older, you know a, uh, um, um, a TV show that was on for, for several years. It's called The Waltons. Now, for the younger people, they don't know, but just, just listen, listen to this. This is long before people would just basically come on, you know, the networks half naked and sleeping and guys sleeping with guys and girls sleeping with girls and all the garbage that's there today. It was a decent show. It was set in the, I'm not sure exactly the state, but anyway, they lived way out in the country and there were this large family, the Waltons. There were probably eight or I don't know how many siblings, but there was a bunch and lived out there with their parents and their grandparents. And in this setting, this particular episode, there was a show, uh, and I think it was setting during the Depression years. So in this one episode, John Boy, the oldest son, is, was going to be able to go to college because he had worked really hard in his studies and things and worked up enough money to be able to send him. And that was really big for the family because they all joined in. Well, in this particular setting, the father wanted to talk to the son before he went to college to give him some good advice as fathers would do and so on. But all through the episode here, he couldn't do that. Every time he would be get to talk to his son, John Boy, you know, the grandfather would come in or the grandmother would have something to say or the mommy or one of the siblings. Even the store clerk had something to say to John Boy about what life would be at college. And the dad became frustrated because he can never talk to his son. Well, at the close of this episode, they're all at the train station about to see John Boy off. And the whole town's there. You know, they're all waving and saying good luck and all these things. And there's John Boy. He's leaning off the rails, waving goodbye as the, plane, or the train is about to leave the station. And his father hasn't said anything. And so his father finally runs up to him. And he can't make this long speech that he really wanted to, I'm sure. But he gave him five valuable words. And they are simply this. Don't forget who you are. That's all he said to him. Don't forget who you are. That's important for us as well. When you forget who you are, you stray from the blessings of God and what God wants for your life. That's what has happened to our country, my friend. That's right. We have forgotten who we are. And the blessings are running out quickly. Man-made blessings cannot sustain a person or a nation. I don't care how many stimulus checks you get. Can't happen. Catch this in Matthew chapter three, uh, 3. Matthew chapter 3, and I'll be finished up. Matthew chapter 3, you know the story. Jesus is about to be baptized in the Jordan by John the Baptist that we talked about last week. 
I think Steve Furtick uh, quoted uh, Chuck Swindoll. It doesn't matter. He said there's a reason why Jesus needed to hear something before chapter 4 took place. You see, in chapter 3, he gets baptized by John. And when in verse number 17, as you see on the screen there, it says, as soon as he came up out of the water, it was like this dove that descended upon him. And a voice from heaven said these words, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. I believe that God gave him and said those words from the heavens for a reason. Because he knew what he was headed for in chapter 4. In chapter 4, Jesus goes, is led in the wilderness by Satan himself. And for 40 days without food, he is tempted over and over and over again. He is told there over and again that if you will just follow what I want you to follow, follow the ways of the world, and you can have all of this. Follow the ways of the world, and it all can be yours. If you just follow the ways of the world. Of course, we know that Jesus did not give in to temptation. And He didn't give in to it because He always went back to truth, not a lie. The Word says this. Listen, God knows that you and I are sent into the world. That's right. He knew that you and I would be sent into the world and He knows that the world will try its best to teach you what is wrong is right and what is right is wrong. That life doesn't start at the womb, they will tell you. That if you're a man, you want to be a woman, it's normal. That marriage between a man and a woman, ah, oh, that's old-fashioned. That hate and destruction, ah, oh, it's perfectly fine. He knows that the world God knows that the world will try to tell you to lie and to cheat and steal your way. And you can have it all. And that there are multiple ways, of course, to get to heaven in the end. He knows that the world is full of lies and deception. And He knows without His protection on you and me, we will fall for it every time. You have to remember, my friend. Somebody needs to hear this. I don't know where you're at in your life, but you need to hear this. You have to remember who your Father is. Your Heavenly Father. For if you do not, you will fall to the temptations of this world. Don't forget, my friend, who you are. Don't forget who you are and who has told you this is my child. In Him I am well pleased. When you accepted Christ, that's exactly what God says about you. And you need to hear that again today. Because tomorrow you'll be back out there in that real world. And that real world is going to tempt you, isn't it? God knows that. You were created by God in your mother's womb. You are loved by the Most High God. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, He says. And He calls you by name. So much so that as He loves you, that He's engraved your name on the palm of His hand, He says. You are a child of God. Never forget that. Don't fall for the lies of Satan. Don't believe everything you hear, my friend. Listen to God. Activate your faith. For it will bless you over and over and over again. And never, ever, 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 ever forget. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Then you are a child of the Most High God. That's good news. Let's pray together. Father, I thank You for today. Thank You for those that have tuned in today. I pray blessings on them, Father. May we not fall for the lie of the world. For Satan is alive and well out there and he's going to do everything he can to teach us. A lie is the truth. You can teach, he can teach all he wants to, Father, but a lie is a lie in the end. But we know your word is the truth. Father, help us to stay in your word. 
so that we are bathed in your truth, so that when we are faced with the temptations of the world, we can do as Jesus did, and we can say, but the Word says, but the Word says, it is the truth. May we activate our faith. Someone needs to hear that today out there. I don't know who they are, man. They've been beat up this week, and they've been hurt run down by the world and ran over by a few things in life even this week Father help them to activate their faith again give them something Father to hold on to today help us to activate our faith daily so that we can amaze you in our faith because we know that through that Father blessings do come and may we all remember who we belong to Father we're yours bought with a price Jesus the Christ stretched his arms out and died for me. And Father, I put my faith, my hope, my trust in him and him alone. And I pray that someone that's listened to this today that hasn't done that, that even in this moment, they will do just that. They will accept that free gift offered through your son. And for those that have just kind of drifted a little bit, perhaps right now they can simply say, Father, forgive me. I've strayed too far away from you. And may they look up and see your face once again, saying, welcome home. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Thank you, Father, for your blessings. Thank you, Father, for Jesus. In him we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, my friend. You have a wonderful, blessed week in the Lord. Remember who you are. In Jesus. Take care. So